Hey everybody, Matt here from Everyday Astro and welcome back to part 5 of our Nina How To Guide. So far in this series we've looked at the settings that you need to use, uh, how to navigate around Nina, we've looked at how to connect your equipment and how to use the Sky Atlas and Framing Assistant to make sure that you're going to get everything right for the night's imaging. Today we're going to look at the sequencing options in Nina and so that's going to be how we set up the different set of activities that we want Nina to do during our night time of imaging. It is also quite useful because once you've set up that sequence, if you're lazy like me, you get to go to bed, leave your sequence running overnight uh, and will simply get up in the morning to look at the data that you've managed to collect. So let's jump into Nina and have a quick look at the sequencing options. Okay, well as we can see from previous uh, videos, all of our equipment is currently connected so that we can see, that there we go, we've got my 2HY268M connected and there's some details about that uh, and today we're going to look at the sequencing option so this is where we set up what we want Nina to take during the night and, and any little bits we want to go around so how long those images are going to be, how many of them, what filter we're going to use all those different things so first things first, I'm going to select an object that we will pretend to image because I still have nothing but cloud uh, obviously so let's do this and over here I'm going to set this as a sequence target so this brings us back to this screen but now as you can see it's brought through the details of the rosette so I've got the um, coordinates for that I've got the transit that's going to be moving through obviously it's clearly not something I want to be imaging this time of year but it, it's good enough for, for the purposes of this demonstration and on the left hand side we have a whole number of options that we can go through. So first of all the, the delay seconds, you know, if you don't want the sequence to start straight away then you can put the amount of time you want to delay the start in that first box. The sequence mode is either one or after another or loop. Uh, I have never used loop, uh, I literally just run sequences one after another uh, if I have more than one sequence. Uh, it then asks a number of questions, usually these are defaulted to off so the first thing is to start guiding. Do you want Nina to start guiding for you when it starts your sequence? So as a general rule, I always want that. Uh, I, I want it to slew to the target. Uh, again, these are the coordinates that it will be aiming to center on. Um, and obviously I want it to center on that as well. So there, the other coordinates is going to center on uh, to hit that target. It then gives me some information down here about what my imaging sequence is going to do in terms of time. Uh, so at the moment this says, I've just gone to the default look here, so it is saying one at one second, uh, so that's all it's going to take is 30 seconds in total for it to run its whole program. So on these lines down here, what we do is we look at what images we want Nina to take for us. So let's use this top line as an example. Let's just say I want to take 10 images. Each of those images are uh, 120 seconds. They are light frames, you do get options to do other frames, for example some people do have a black filter in their filter wheel so they are able to just switch to that to do darks, I don't have that, so in this case these are going to be light frames. And for my filter, it defaults to the current filter, but actually I'm going to start with S2, one by one binning, I want it to dither between frames, but actually I only want it to dither between every fourth frame. So uh, after every four frames it will dither and then it has my gain and offset which it automatically pulls through from one of the options tab in my camera. So obviously that gives you one line that it's going to do but you might want to do more than one type of image on your target. So if you come down to the bottom you can hit plus to add a new row and it literally copies the row above. So I'm able to go well, I, I still want to do 10, still at 120 but this time I want to use the HA filter and then I can add another line and just change that to the O3 filter and then I could add another line and I could add luminance to that if I wanted to as well. Again all the information like the, the dithering and how many frames there are uh, all of those just get kept as you add new lines to it. So I now have four stages that this sequence is going to run through to take images during that night. And you've noticed up here now, it's now changed the duration. So this now tells me that it's going to take me an hour and 40 minutes to do the whole um, imaging sequence. 
But I do know I have approximately two hours a night at the moment. You know, it's ever diminishing, uh, getting closer and closer uh, to the summer solstice. So it, I'm losing a lot of night by the night. So I know I've got about two hours. So the great thing about knowing the duration is that I can adjust things. So I could say, well, actually, do you know what? What I'm going to do is I'm going to just see if I do 12 images of each, can I get a little bit more data? And there you go, that fits perfectly into my two hour window. So I now know that all of this will be collected in the best imaging time that I have available. I could obviously start it and finish it a little bit before and after that. I could take a risk on that. But if you want to fit it into the, your exact times, this is a great way to actually do that. So this sets up the first sequence that's there. Um, and I, you can change its target name. So I'm just going to change that to Rosette so I know what it is. That is then what will be saved in the file name. So I'll know what it is that uh, has been uh, imaged because I can also add additional sequences to the the to Nina. So if I just use M101 for example, so I'm just going to set that for framing assistant and then down here when this loads it gives me the option to add as a sequence target. So if I click that it, it now adds a second tab up here. So I can come into the pinwheel galaxy, again it's got the target name there and the coordinates and you can see it's a much better target for me anyway um, and it might be that I want to do 10 of those again let's just say 120 seconds each but I'm going to do this between LRGB I want the same amount of dithering so I can add my four lines again and just change that to do some RGB imaging so there you go I've now set up a second sequence again I can start guiding slew to target and center target so now I have both of these set up in a way that they will do one after the other. So it'll start with the rosette and then it'll move on to the pinwheel after that. The only other thing that's worth noting in here is you do have some autofocus options. Again, these do default to everything being off to start with. Um, but the way I do autofocus is obviously I want that to focus on the start. So as I start my sequence, do an autofocus for me. I also wanted to do it every time I change a filter, that you can change your focus when you change a filter. So I make sure every time I change a filter, it runs the autofocus sequence again. Um, and then it gives you a number of other options here to try and make sure that you have to have limited interaction with your equipment during the night. Again, be lazy, go to bed. Um, so it could be that after an elapsed amount of time, so it could be every 30 minutes or every 60 minutes, you automatically do a uh, autofocus after that period of time. Or it could be after a set number of exposures or it could be after the temperature changes by a certain amount because you know what temperature affects your, the focal length of your tube. Um, or the one I tend to use almost all the time is after a HFR increase. So if my star size is increased by 10% or more, it runs autofocus. So on those nights where that doesn't change, I don't waste any time refocusing unless Nina detects that I need to refocus. So I find this the most useful one to use. Once you have all of these set up uh, and you're, you've got everything going on, your, on all of your sequences, uh, you can save your sequences. So you are able to literally just hit this and you could save it on your desktop and it'll save as an XML file. Uh, and when you save that, then it will just go through. You are also able to load sequences. So uh, previous one there. So it, it brings that one through. So I've now got a third sequence at the top and that brings through the details of what I was imaging before. This is the current project I'm kind of working on and I'm not having much luck with clouds with that, it has to be said. Um, so now I have all three up here. And if I wanted to just start that, I can actually go back to the first one, come down to this bottom right down here and just hit play and it will run its sequence. So it will start to autofocus, it will slew to the target, it will center that target for me. It will do everything and once it's happy where it is, it will simply start imaging for the night. If there are ever any of these that you want to remove, uh, each of them does have a little X that comes up when you hover over it. So if there's anything there by accident or you know, there's one you forgot to, to re replace the sequence rather than uh, just adding a sequence, you can just kill that off, click OK and it takes that one away and it'll just run those two. Then you could just hit play and off it'll go.
Okay, so that's the basics of how to set up a sequence. I mean, it really is quite straightforward, like most of Nina, it's done in a very, very simple way. There is a new sequencer that has been released in one of the Nina Nightly updates. Um, however, I will cover that in a separate video later on in the series. It is very different to the current one, so if you're just starting with Nina, this sequence uh, operation is the easiest way to get through that. In the next videos, I am really hoping to get some clear skies so that I can start to look at things like the autofocus routine and the meridian flip as well, because I'd like to make some videos on those, but until the clouds go away, that is very, very difficult. I feel like I've had nothing but clouds for weeks. So as soon as I get the opportunity, I will get the next parts done. Uh, but until then, I hope this has been helpful. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Clear skies.